All right, boys, we got some shit to talk about. I took a spontaneous trip to Amsterdam uh, a couple of days ago. Spontaneous as fuck. I was kind of like thinking about it for a while, but didn't book it up until literally the day of the flight. I just decided, yeah, like I'm literally going today. I go to the gym with my friend. I'm kind of telling him like, bro, I might go to Amsterdam today like to see this girl. And he's like, oh my God, you know, that's mad. Like you should go, it'll be so good. And I literally decide, okay, there and then like, I'm gonna go today, which I, you know, it's not that far away, but it is kind of like a lot more spontaneous than what I would usually do. Cause I'm like an over planner. So my friend then drives me to the airport. I literally buy like the plane tickets on the drive there by the, this time I actually bought like a real fucking test, went to the same place uh, to get tested, uh, you know, for the PCR shit and then got on the flight, little shitty flight. It's like a 55 minutes or something the plan was then that i have been speaking to this one girl from amsterdam for a little while probably probably close to like a month or so now maybe even a bit more and she's, she's a beautiful girl she's from not amsterdam she's from like the netherlands in like some random like small village there so i've been speaking to her like we connected through like instagram and she watches the videos she was like deep into like the hamza unfiltered channel and everything and so we used to just speak on Instagram a little bit and because the reason why is because I saw like one of her comments on one of my pictures and of course like bro when a girl's commented on your picture like even though I get like a fair amount of comments sometimes I get like 50 to 100 to 200 comments it's like bro I'm clicking on every girl's profile or like all the girls watching this video like taking notes wait hang on what, what did he just say so I clicked on her profile and then went through like her story or something and there was like a quote from me saying uh how much comfort will you sacrifice from for your future self so i replied to that saying like, oh my god you know like someone smart said this we spoke since then sending voice notes and she had like such a cute like dutch accent like such a cute accent um i've went back over that conversation on instagram like i don't know five ten times and like listen to all the voice notes because it's just fucking adorable uh, and we spoke more and more and she ended up starting to write a song about me which i posted on my story once if you haven't got me on instagram there's a, like a lot more like personal content there than you actually see on youtube and even this channel as well my instagram is hamza97x so it's like i posted it to my stories i'm probably cute like she wrote like a song about me um saying like oh you know it's not like in i'm not gonna sing but like you know it's only been like one and a half weeks but you've become the most important guy and like you know all this like just fucking cute shit right and so it kind of became apparent like yeah like like i'll fly over to see her because i'll be like a nice fun trip and everything but didn't really get around to it there was a quarantine uh because of covid so i wasn't gonna go when you have to like sit around for five days but it was in in mind and then when I was in Dubai, so this is where it gets fucking interesting, right? So when I was in Dubai, I met a girl there who I spoke about, who was the first girl who came to the meetup who I ended up sleeping with. And she is from uh, Amsterdam, like specifically Amsterdam as well. So the first girl, th we're gonna call her the village girl. Uh, she is from a part of Netherlands, like some small village. And then the second girl is uh, from Amsterdam and we'll call her like the Dubai girl. And this is important soon <laughs> and um yeah so pretty much i plan to see both girls this is like the whole trip is pretty much based on this thing of like there was two girls that i like and i was gonna meet both of them in the same place obviously not at the same time and um there was really really good learning lessons from this trip i'm not gonna lie it actually there was a point in this trip which you know i'll tell you the full story but there was a point when i actually was lying there i was like mate i'm actually so grateful that i've done this trip and i'm doing more trips like this because it doesn't you know first in some way it kind of feels like oh you know it's a holiday you're not working it's not productive and i realized like my work is just improving my character and going through experiences and and you know, I've done a lot of like the, the low key self improvement stuff, which is, you know, get consistent in exercise and meditate and be productive and read. But now it's like, I've got to the point where that stuff is kind of giving me dim diminishing returns and like the real, like high ROI times of my life now, or when I'm going out and doing experiences with other people, because that's when I'm like challenged. That's when, you know, you, it's like your values, your morals, your character gets developed when there's so many different things that you could do. And like all these insights that you get. So I planned then to meet mo both girls and I meet the first one, the village girl, <laughs> as soon as I uh, land in Amsterdam, 
check into the hotel and I'm checking into the hotel and like there's a guy behind the desk and he's he asked me I don't know if I put this set in or, or not but on the booking of the hotel he said like oh there's it said that this is like a booking for two people will someone else be joining you and I said something like we'll see <laughs> like a woman to the right of me just burst out laughing and said like that's a really good answer so I found, I found that funny as fuck and then they started like giving me advice on like where to take girls and everything and so I went up to my room and then the first girl was or uh, the village, <laughs> village girl <laughs> she was already on the way and then so she got let up so kind of gave me like instant credibility in like the hotel because I was upstairs um just about having a shower and stuff and then she was like allowed to come up like she must have like went to the front door spoke to them and said like, oh yeah like the packy who just came in I'm gonna go see him uh, <laughs> So I see her straight away, like massive hug. It's like first time I'm fucking seeing her. It's actually we're all, we're both kind of like taken aback that you know this is real. Like we've just been like like just sending voice notes and everything, and like here we are, like fucking in front of each other. It's fucking mad, and I feel like we connected like well just straight away. There was like a very very, it was a very very nice dynamic. What I really really like. I should have gave a disclaimer because both girls are gonna watch this. Both girls watch my unfiltered channel, so. I should give like, I mean, I message them directly and tell them like, obviously I'm going to be speaking on filter. I'm going to go into detail. So you're not, do you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm kind of emphasizing with them right now because whilst <laughs> village girl is watching this and she's like, oh my God, yes, we did have a connection. Dubai girl's watching this thinking like, oh, that fucking bitch. <laughs> and then in like 10 minutes, it's going to switch over. So I will have to give them like a disclaimer. Like, yeah, only watch up until 11.35 and then just click off. You don't need to watch the rest of the video, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but what I really liked about the the village girl, <laughs> the village girl, was that, bro, the fucking, the dynamic of like the masculine feminine energy was so fucking beautiful. Do you know it was really on this trip that that was one of my insights where I was really so aware of my masculine energy and my desire to lead like it was just like it was so much in my mind of just thinking of the smallest things like who opens the door who steps out first and of course it you know that's a sense of overthinking and you know you'd like it to be more natural but i do feel like it's that bell curve where like at first you're not thinking about it because you're a spurg and you don't know about masculine energy you don't know you know you should be leading the night or anything then you're overthinking about it because you've been watching the fucking videos and you're thinking like, oh yeah like i should be leading then eventually it like it gets naturalized and you don't think about it but you just do it out of a habit so i feel like i'm in this stage especially in terms of dating where i'm really really so aware and conscious that i want to be the leader i want to bring my masculine energy and i want her to bring her feminine energy and i, I really really felt it with this girl with like the smallest things where it was like it was all uh it was all determined by me of like what we were going to do i was leading the night when i stand up is when we stand you know like small things like that and that's like being a guy who I've been a lot more feminine than masculine for most of my life it was a very beautiful experience because I really do feel like I'm claiming or reclaiming the level of masculinity which I would have had if I wasn't conditioned by the feminized society around us and like we, we hit her off straight away and we go for like a walk we go for food nearby and Okay, so, I mean, we are on the unfiltered channel. I did speak to her about this. Like, I was going to, like, you know, fucking be unfiltered. So I'm going to go through all the fucking details. <laughs> so we come back. And so the perception I had of this girl was, you know, fully, like, village girl and, like, just fucking, you know, like, low-key and everything. And I wasn't surprised when we met and she was exactly how I expected, right? And she was like, Loki, I knew for a fact, like, it seems like, you know, I don't know so much, but it seems like she has like a good family up upbringing. Her parents are together, live together and everything. So that's always like a, like a fantastic um, um, green flag to see. And so I envisioned this day with her to be that I land, we go for food and everything, we'll end up like, kissing or something. And that's about as like really as far as it would go on this first day. Perhaps we'll see each other again on the same trip. And, um, or, you know, we'll see each other again in the future. Eventually we will be, like sleep with each other. And I did have a feeling that I would be like one off the first guys that she would be sleeping with. And um, it was like the smallest thing where like, 
we went out for dinner, but just before we did, she kind of asked like, oh, like, should I leave my purse here? So straight away, it was like, in my mind, like, I'm gonna have sex with her tonight. Just, when you've like, when you've experienced a fair amount of that, like, you know, the dating lifestyle like I have, it's like, that is, na that's like my naturalization, you know, the, the bell curve I just talked about. In terms of, you know, masculine energy, I'm, I'm here at the top of the bell curve, I have to be aware of it and everything. But in terms of knowing, like, which girl I'm gonna sleep with, like, bro, I'm already, like, oh, it's automatic for me, it's effortless in the sense that, like, I just, it's a habit, it's like, I know, I just know what's happening kind of thing. So straight away it clicked, and I was like, oh, like, I'm gonna have sex with her tonight. And, do you know, this is, hopefully I'll remember like a, a separate part of, the, of like a, a different story, which just happened yesterday, but it, it is kind of relevant to this. Um, yeah, but we come back and it's kind of that thing of like, it's kind of late. She has to travel like three hours or something. So it's just like, oh, like, can she sleep here? Yeah, yeah, of course. And so obviously like, you know, what's going to happen, even though it's like, you have to go through like the ritual of like, you know, building it up and everything. I knew what was going to happen. And then as things are getting heated, she just kind of opens up and then tells me that she's never had sex before, which I wasn't, I wasn't really surprised, but do you know what? Straight away, do you know the, the feeling that was just so fucking apparent for like the rest of the time or, you know, it's from that moment till even now, like, I, and I think it's going to be like forever. It was just one certain feeling that I've had when, like a, when a girl tells you that she's a virgin and you're like in bed naked with her about to have sex with her. I've never had this before, so maybe this is a sense of my own development or mindfulness or something, but it was, it was honor. It was like, I felt special. I felt literally like honored to be that guy. I've never felt that before. Like I have taken like a girl's virginity before. I've, I've done it multiple times. And it was all, it always kind of felt in like a kind of, sleazy way because I was like a little fuckboy in university and like do you know what I mean so I, I never really I never saw the extent of which like you take the responsibility like it's a big responsibility to take if you're like a cold-hearted degenerate who's watching fucking pickup artist videos like John Anthony life's that fucking re bro have you seen what that guy looks like Fucking hell, bro. He made a response video about me just criticizing me and he was like, you know, disagreeing with everything I said and he was being like hostile and violent and stuff. But I took one look at the guy and I was like, fucking hell, that's a disgusting looking man. But that's just, that's a fucking separate story. But, <laughs> but um, if you're one of those fucking pickup art, you know, disgusting, like just fucking like soulless men, as I have 100% I take um, accountability, I, as I have been, then it doesn't, it's not really that special. If anything, it's a bit more like ego, like, you know, boasting rights and stuff. And so that's what it always was for me. Like when I was in university and I'd been with a girl who had never had sex before that I would come out to my boys. Like it was always about the validation I get from my boys. And I tell them, oh, I just took that girl's virginity here. Oh, I'm so awesome, please like me because I didn't get a consistent sense of love when I was a child. This time, like, it felt very different where, like I'm telling you the story now and I have told one of my friends of the story, but it, it it's not for a sense of validation. It's like, it's almost like like a, a mindset change or a movement or something that I wanna bring onto the guys to show like, that's such a beautiful experience. Like we as men are so, so, so attracted to purity. And I think in the modern day, we've been conditioned to not value that. And then what, like, you know, the, what was the number one criteria of a man to get married 100, 200, 300 years ago? The woman was a virgin. Of course she was. That was like, bro, there was like, we would find the weird now because we have been conditioned in a certain way. But the truth is that there was like, like con rituals and um, uh, there was a certain word for it. Some, somewhat similar to a ritual where like, I, I used to hear it all the time where it's kind of like the, the couple get married and it's like they, the the woman's like the the wife's side have to kind of show that she's a virgin and there was like a weird like tradition or something of like some culture where they would kind of bring back like a bloody bed sheet to kind of show like look like you know he just like um took her virginity and everything like you know she bled on the first time and that's like we find that weird as fuck and it's so like you know it's so like sexist and everything and it but the, the truth is like that's how we've always operated i think men deep down i think any man who's watching this as much as we'd say like, oh no, but we want a girl who's really good at sex. Like me and my friend Chris from the gym, we laugh about this all the time. We just say like, bro, if she's good at sex, it's because some other guy trained her for you. 
You just fuck it. You're fucking another guy at this point. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, but I would, like, you know, virgins aren't good at, bro, what the fuck? Like, but they're not good at good, giving head, bro. She's practiced. Apologies, I just spat everywhere, but she's practiced on other guys. That's why she's fucking good because fucking Steve, fucking Jamie, <laughs> I've been telling her, like, yeah, like, yeah, baby, do it like this. And now she knows how to do it to plead fucking Steve. And she'll do it to you. And you're like, oh, yeah, this is so sure better than a virgin. You've got, like, fucking other guys fucking come on your dick, bro. You're fucking disgusting, man. But, but in the modern day, like, that's that's what a lot of guys, and even myself for so long, we never had this value to, to think of how important it is for a girl to be a virgin. For at least a girl to be, like have a good level of like purity it's, it's such a weird topic to, to think about because it's something that we like it's not talked about like at all in the modern day you're a fucking weirdo if you talk about this everyone's like a bunch of people who are watching this who usually like my videos are watching this and thinking wait hamster is fucking weird he's he's probably one of those misogynists who hate women clearly not bro clearly not it's just a very interesting like we have always valued that if you're a man watching this right now i ask you to just like be introspective, maybe pause the, pause the video, just kind of sit around. Just put, pretend that there is no societal condition on you whatsoever. Pretend that you are allowed to have any any thought that you want right now and you never have to express it to anyone so it can be purely unfiltered. Just ask yourself that that truthful question right now. Imagine the woman that you're going to have chill, kids with. Imagine the woman that you want to spend the rest of your life with. Do you want her to be a virgin? Do you want her to have... N never been seen by men in that way before do you want her to only have an attachment to you to only pair bond with you or do you want her do you want her to be her everything or do you want to be her 10 percent or 20 percent truly ask yourself that question without this idea of like you know people will know because you never have to tell anyone this question but it's just important for your own values and, th and the truth is the overwhelming majority of guys who I think I've got good character would say yes. Well, yeah, of course, it's, that's common sense. Of course I would want that. I think the only guys who say that they wouldn't want that, you know, they're not interested in it, are purely the guys who are still in like the more of the degenerate phase where you're chasing pleasure instead of purpose. And so, right, and so truly so, if your goal is pleasure, you will get more pleasure from a girl who has had a lot of casual sex experience, or just a lot of sex experience anyway, because it's like, she'll come in and she'll bring more of like the confident energy and she'll know how to please you more, which is, you know, there is value in that. If you are in that boat and you're saying like, no, because you know, she'd be bad at sex. I urge you to just, I urge you to be introspective and just think of that debate between pleasure and purpose because it does show me, even though you'll hate me saying this, I hope that you'll keep this in mind and you'll remember this in a few months or years time and you have the humility to really take it on board. It shows me that you're a lesser man. It shows me that you are inferior. You're not a superior man. You are one of those low tier men who chases pleasure which might be like, you know, the goal that you really want right now, but it, it is the truth. If that offends you, then good. So the moment she told me this, bro, it, I, I already knew that it was going to be a beautiful experience and it was, and there was like particular moments. So as we're like having sex that I could, I could see the attachment being formed, like in the way that she looked, I could literally like, I, Maybe you know, I'm making it up or something, but it did feel like I was so present that I could literally see like the pair bonding start. P potentially, this it probably was like an ego thought, but it kind of hit. It was only afterwards that I really realized this it was. It, it was like yesterday or something, but it really hit me that I was like in that moment that I saw her face just look at me in a certain way. I knew that I would be a part of her forever, a part of her mind, her soul, her, her heart. I knew that I had been like imprinted there. And that, that's such a beautiful experience. Like I can't explain how like, how truly like honored and special that actually makes me feel. Do you know, I, I was compared, I don't know who I spoke. I think it was to the boys. So I, in Amsterdam, I did a meetup. We'll talk about that as well. I did a meetup. I just posted on my Instagram saying like, you know, come meet me and I'll, I'll tell, take all the details. But I, there was one guy I was speaking to about um, casual sex and we spoke about virginity and everything. And I remember saying like, um, I forgot the exact like thing. What was it now? Fuck. 
the, the hard part of you know these hamster unfiltered videos is like I don't have a script or anything so I'm just going off memory and sometimes I'm about to say something sick and it's like I forget it and so I that's when I take a pause and I'm like you, you guys think that I'm like doing this for you know, emphasis and I'm a really good speaker I'm not bro I just don't know what the fuck else to say so like my mind just thinking quicker we say something so you seem smart <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that um, that night with <laughs> the village girl was fucking is incredible, man. It was really, really, really good experience. And you know what? I I did not have. You've been watching these videos, so you know, like one of the big things in my mind has been to change my update my character and you know pursue pleasure less and to not be into like casual sex. And I didn't even have up until right now. I didn't even have the thought about that, you know. So I think that's a really good sign. Like I didn't. I don't feel bad for that moment at all. It didn't feel like casual to me in any sense. Um, I think especially because we've talked for a long time and like we, not like a long, long time, but you know, like a month or something just through like voice notes and everything. And so that is quite like, it doesn't feel casual at all. So it didn't, this personally for me, didn't feel like um, a negative experience sexually. It truly, truly felt like only positive um, up until something happened, which we have to talk about. <laughs> So that night's like really, really good. And before this had actually happened, yeah, I should clarify that as soon as like we got into the, you know, I got into the hotel, she came upstairs, we hugged and we, I'm just getting ready and everything. And she asked me like, what I'm gonna do in Amsterdam. I'm seeing her for that day. So that's the Tuesday that I just landed. It's like 5 p.m. So we've only got the evening together. And she asked me what I'm gonna do tomorrow. And I remember she said, like, she was saying that she was busy tomorrow. That's why like I didn't plan to see her the Wednesday, you know, the morning after. And I said tomorrow, I just fully just straight up like just looked at her and just told the truth like I have a date planned and I'm gonna like record some videos and do some stuff. And you know, it's kind of like she's like, oh, like you know, you've got a date and everything. And you can see that it kind of hurts her to, you know, not only be the only one and everything. But that was like, so that happened first and then, you know, everything, the night happens. Then in the morning, it's, she's kind of like, she hasn't really expressed it that much, but she, you can see some level of discomfort where, you know, we've just connected in the way that we have and, you know everything that's just happened and then she kind of knows that she's gonna go home today and I'm gonna go on like a date with a girl and perhaps I didn't make it so clear like I, th I think we did speak that yeah it was the day the girl I was seeing was the one from Dubai but perhaps I didn't make it as clear as I maybe should have that it wasn't so much just a date it was gonna be like spending a couple of days with the girl from Dubai and um so in the morning, you know, I say goodbye to her. It's like proper sweet seeing her off and everything. It feels awesome. And then I'm having like a drink downstairs in the hotel, like just like coffee or something. And then within, literally within like 20 minutes, the next girl comes. So I get even more fucking like, um, more of a name for myself in this hotel. Cause you know, they're like, they're sat downstairs as well. And, um, so I go up. So now it's, um, I'm with the Dubai girl and she's from Amsterdam like she lives nearby as well and uh she's the one who I spoke about in the what happened to do what happened in Dubia <laughs> what happened in Dubia video um and yeah that was like so in Dubai it was like a, such a beautiful experience I was like that and like there was there's like three main highlights of Dubai and like she, she was one of them it was really like such a beautiful experience to like connect with her and we had a deep conversation and we're like lying down over the balcony you know what I mean it was like such a beautiful experience and so I remember like since we connected so well we stayed in touch and I, we knew that we would see each other again and so this was like the plan for it so um she came down one of the funniest things was like she walked in with a massive fucking it wasn't massive but it was like she walked in with a suitcase like this this bitch was moving in like she got comfortable straight away like because she already knew like you know we connected with each other so she brought like a big fucking suitcase and like yeah well i'm staying over so i need all my stuff and um i like that confidence though to be honest and uh we go up and it's just straight away bro it's like the, the connections there man so it's like just straight away i remember like big hug it was like so awesome to see her and like straight away it's like there was something about like just just kind of like kissing her on the cheek and kissing her on the neck like not even in so much of a sexual way just kind of like you know as, as an uh an open embrace for the first time that you've seen someone in like a little while and it just like it warms my heart to think about that moment that we hugged and the good thing about her was that she lived just nearby so she was like fully from like Amsterdam and she knew like so much random stuff to do so we she all pretty much had like a bucket list of stuff for us to do which was really nice because to be honest I've never really liked I'm never that type of person who like you know book stuff and knows like what to do in a new city or anything I just kind of like 
I just kind of like, if I was there by myself, I'd just kind of go on a walk and, you know, see what I find or something. And, and usually in a situation like this, where if I'm going to go traveling or something, it usually is like s someone else who, maybe we can say that's a, a sense of leadership or something, but I, yeah, that's actually a good question for me to keep in mind. Was that potentially less, um, less masculine of me? I don't know if that's overthinking or not, but yeah. Um, but yeah, she had like a nice list of like stuff for us to do to go onto like a nice like little pedal boat and everything to go out for a walk in this like particular place and to get food here and everything. So on the Wednesday with her, spent all day just doing like a bunch of activities in Amsterdam, like go and buy like a nice like jump. I look fucking sexy in this like I got this like cream colored like zip, a three like one quarter zip jacket. It was a like jumper, fleece something. It's really really nice. It's kind of something that you'd see first man the youtuber it's kind of something you see him wearing and um fucking sexy guy bro <laughs> um yeah we have a really good day go for dinner and everything and then on the second day with her which is now the thursday so i've got like one more day that's actually when we i was thinking oh yeah like you know every, i posted some instagram reels so this is why i was saying to get me on instagram because i do like a day in the life video like every single day like a reel and i like edit it to music and because i don't do any video editing on youtube anymore i've got a team of editors and so they're the ones who really make the you know the videos pop off on the main channel and on this channel i do no editing i literally just record and upload it and so I kind of missed the sense of, you know, like putting together some clips and making it line up with the music. So I started this little like challenge that my friend started in the gym. And it's just kind of like you produce a piece of content every day, showing your day in the life, you know, doing self-improvement stuff. And so that's why I said, get me on Instagram. Because as this was going on in Amsterdam, that's how people know like what I'm doing, where I'm at right now. Because I don't always say like, oh, hey guys, I'm in Amsterdam. It's just kind of like, I make a day in the life thing of like, oh, you know, there's like a plane and it's just landed and like there's something in Amsterdam. And everyone's like, oh my God, he's in Amsterdam. Uh, do a meetup. So now I've been there for two days. That's when the comments really started coming in of people saying, oh, he's in Amsterdam, do a meetup here. So then I thought, like I said to the girl I was with, then Dubai, the Dubai girl, yeah, I'm going to do a meetup tomorrow. And this is when, yeah, I really did fuck up because um, so with the first girl, the village girl, I only got to really see her for friday uh, the tuesday evening because i landed at like 5 p.m so we had like the evening and you know the night time together and like a bit of the morning like first thing in the morning and then saw her off and we had this kind of like thing of like oh yeah like i'd see her on friday before i fly down but it was it wasn't there wasn't like a good level of communication with that which i take responsibility for because if, if you're going to book something with a girl bro be serious about it say like okay i will meet you on friday at 8 a.m and it's like it's booked in put it in your calendar and everything that was a really wishy-washy way where i told her like oh yeah like i want to see you before i leave and i think i just didn't really have it in mind because now i'm chilling with a different girl and i've got you know the boys messaging me and commenting saying like do a thing so i was like where me on the second day so on the third day, but the second day with the Dubai girl on now Thursday, we do like, again, like a bunch of activities, bunch of cute shit. We're like going for like a massive walk, go on like the, the boat along the canal. That was really nice. And then that's the day that we said that um, we're going to go like for a picnic and smoke weed and everything. And this is where like, a, bro, every wow, fucking hell, man. There's a video coming up on the main channel, which is titled like Hamza's eating pizza. Oh my God. Like you need to watch that if you're one of these guys who are like, oh my God, like Hamza's, Hamza's eating uh, unhealthy food. Hamza's smoke, bro. The difference is, and the, the, I think the worst comments are like, oh, but he tells us not to, not to have fun. And look at him, help, bro. The difference is, Stop doing the bad habits on your normal day-to-day -day life. You're a, you're a fucking weirdo if you smoke weed on a normal day. You're a fucking weirdo if you play video games on a fucking, like, Tuesday. You're a fucking weirdo if you just drink on a normal day. We don't do that shit anymore. You're, if you eat fucking, like, if you go to the shop and buy some fucking... That's, like, that's fucking weird, buying snacks from the shop, bro. Don't do that shit. But the difference is, you don't do that stuff every day, but when it's in line with, like, a social experience... That's like, that's what we're doing self-improvement for is so that we, when we're in like a social experience, when we go on holiday, that's when we feel awesome. That's when you let loose. So don't drink alcohol every day or every week like a fucking weirdo. But don't you dare think to yourself like, oh, but I, uh, like, you know, there's going to be a party, but I'm not going to drink because my drinking's not good for, shut the fuck up, it's not good for muscle, bro. It's like, if you're drinking five times a year, it will do absolutely nothing but actually positives for your life. Like, it would actually be a good thing because then you'll get to, like, go and actually enjoy, like, a party or something. The same thing with smoking weed. If you're smoking weed five times a year, this is, that's about as much as I do right now. Like, th this is the first time that I've smoked since the start of the year. And I smoked, like, one fucking joint. And not even, like, a full joint, bro. 
that's the difference. So that, bro, if you're going to Amsterdam, you smoke weed. Of course you do. Don't, oh, bro, I'm on self-improvement and that's dopamine. No, shut the fuck up. Just don't overdose on dopamine on your normal day-to-day -day life. If you're going on a date with a girl and she wants to get like pancakes or ice cream, bro, get some fucking ice cream with her, bro. What's wrong with you? But don't eat ice cream on a normal day-to-day -day, like of your routine. That's the way you structure this, right? So on this day, like we went out and because all of this was on my Instagram story and everyone's like, oh, Adonis doesn't smoke weed. Shut the fuck up, bro. Just shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's my little rant, right? And um, we go to like this nice park and bro, this, this, ah, oh, this was honestly such a good experience. It was such a beautiful experience here. So we, me and Dubai girl had been like hyping this up, you know, the night before, like we went to the shop and we bought some like nice snacks and like protein bars and everything. And we said, okay, well, like, tomorrow we'll buy a joint. We'll go sit in a park. We'll have a picnic. But that's such a cute fucking idea. And so we've been hyping this up for the night before. And now it's like, it's about time. We went, we woke up, went to go into the canals, like in this like little paddle boat, which is cute. Then straight after that went for pancakes and it was fucking delicious. Like this place that we went to was like so, so nice. I was craving pancakes for literally so long. And um, we had that, it was so nice. And then it was the thing, okay, we're gonna go smoke and we're gonna go buy like a joint from somewhere now. So it's fucking awesome, bro. So in Amsterdam, you can literally, like it's because it's legal, you can literally just go to like certain shops and just buy like weed there. So I we went to this Bulldog Cafe. I still have a lighter from there. Which, if you're from Amsterdam, you probably know it because it's like a pretty famous one. And it's kind of like, you literally just walk in and it's like, they literally have like all the strains like on a computer and you just kind of choose the one that you want. So I got like um, a Skittles joint, something like that. And um, it was like um, a couple of euros. I, I, so I don't even remember actually, but it wasn't like, it wasn't as like potentially cheap as it would be. In the, I'm trying to compare the prices. So in the UK, we just do like 20 bag, which is like two grams for 20 pounds. And then that makes like, depends on what size of the joint. But to be honest, the joint was like a pretty like decent size. Whereas I would usually, would, when I used to smoke, mine would be quite small because I, I didn't have like that big of a tolerance. And I, I don't at all. So um, yeah, so we buy that shit and then we go to the park. And in the park is where I'm thinking, oh yeah, like I'll do a meetup. So I went onto Instagram and said like, just took a picture of myself and said like, I'm going to do a meetup in this park, a bundle park tomorrow in the morning time so that's when it starts getting organized and of course you know I'm, I'm in the middle of you know like you know everyone's messaging me on instagram saying okay do a meetup and i'm next to this girl so i kind of like completely forgot about the the idea of meeting the girl from the village tomorrow like friday before i leave which like that was really sad man because it this comes in like we'll talk about this in a bit later but like it it really like hurt her and to be honest it did hurt me as well not being able to like see her before i go and but at this moment, at least, we're like, we're lying down in the park. We're just about to smoke. I've got my music on. We've got like a bunch of like nice like snacks and like some juice and everything. And we're like lying down next to like this little, um, you know how there's like water in a park, uh, like a lake. I don't, what would you call that? A pond. Yeah, a pond. And we're just smoking and everything. And it just kind of hits me at one point when I'm just kind of like, my eyes are closed. We're literally lying down and it feels so peaceful that I'm just kind of meditating on the sounds that I can hear. And it's just, there's so much beauty, love, laughter, and like friendliness there. Like I, I you know, I could pinpoint certain like groups of people through the sounds. And I started like, you know, just like um, so, sat up straight and started looking around. And it's such a beautiful experience. There's like, there's a couple sat on the park. There's a bunch of people exercising. There was like, someone had set up like a slack line, which is kind of like in between two trees, you kind of do like a little balancing thing on like a line. And then behind that was literally someone on gym rings. And um, there was like some like Spanish band or something like quite, like somewhat quietly like practicing like a bit of their music, you know, just kind of singing and just being like, you know, just chilling in the park. There was like a couple of more picnics um, next to us and like in you know, groups of people. And it felt so like just, peaceful and like it felt so awesome it's, it's so weird like potentially i'm blinded by um my my anxiety and everything but i don't think you really experience the same vibe in the uk potentially like maybe someone from london can correct me but maybe in like hyde park on a summer day you'd kind of see a somewhat similar vibe but i think especially because i was smoking weed at the time it's like that's you know the specific thing which you wouldn't so much see in like 
I mean, no, you would see it in the UK anyway, but yeah, it did. It just felt different. And I remember the next day when I did the meetup is one of the things I said to the boys who asked me, like, you know, how's Amsterdam? I said, bro, like, we're in the middle of the city right now. We're right in the middle of the city and it doesn't feel like I'm in the middle of a city. Like, it's such a beautiful, like, homely, like, it feels safe. It feels so, like, such a community is here. Like, it just feels so, like, peaceful. It doesn't, you know, I'm not walking past and there's some, like, loud fucking... You know, like, bald-headed guy who's, like, screaming on the phone who I'm thinking, fuck, he's going to try and start, you know. Obviously, your anxiety kind of, like, covers your lens and everything like that. But, like, I didn't get that that vibe much. But then something happened, right? Um, so we're laying down, we're, like, smoking, me and this girl. And just out of the corner of my eye, you know, I'm having a good mo mood and everything. And I just kind of noticed, like, three guys on a bench just, like, looking over. And that's when my mind started to kind of think about a certain dynamic which was all about you know the sexual marketplace and the thing like i don't know if this is going to be cringe but it was kind of like i could see what i would assume is like you know the average guy or anything like they, they didn't look like horrible they didn't look amazing or anything and so if someone's if a guy's roughly average i kind of assumed yep they jack off they probably don't have girlfriends they probably don't have sex and here they see like a little packy taking one of their girls and you know that dynamic kept on like kind of staying in my mind a bit where like i look over they were just looking like just looking and looking and looking i'm sure like they weren't you know looking out of like you know hatred or anything but it kind of like started playing in my mind like a sense of anxiety did come from this and I was kind of chill with it and everything. I told the girl, and we kind of laughed about it because we were like, oh, a bunch of Jeffries looking at the, like, the Adonis who's got the girl and everything. And um, so at one point then, she gets up to go to the toilet. And so she goes for a while, and then I'm just kind of chilling. And so I, I turn a little bit, and I see them just, like, all three of them just kind of, like, looking towards me. So I'm, I'm kind of, like, smoking. But I look at them, I kind of smile, and I do this. And all I see from them is, like, just no response no like no wave back no this or anything and I, I kept my hand up for like a little bit you know i did this or something and like bro at that point it's like bro come on like sh <laughs> i don't know if that now it's justified for me to feel like a little bit like come on what the fuck right Put your, give me a fucking thumbs up bro come on um but i'm still kind of like chilling with it now my like i am feeling quite anxious but at the same time i'm just kind of like physically like in the outer world kind of staying calm and everything so i'm just kind of like casually checking my phone i'm just smoking and like lying down looking at the sky and everything just kind of keeping them in mind but not really expecting anything to happen and but bro every time i, I turn and look like they're looking and of course like um you, you know weed can make you paranoid and you can make people feel like you know they're not looking like no one else it didn't feel like everyone was looking it felt like these three guys were looking every time i looked they were looking towards my direction and of course when you kind of like do this towards like a group of people who look in your direction it's like they can obviously see you do that right so of course there's a level of like weirdness with this situation and it is feeling a bit weird and like obviously my camera's gonna die bro fuck <laughs> i'll take the charge her up so we'd be able to last a little bit longer so the girls went and then she's gone for a little while and then i got a call from her and straight away she's like oh i'm not doing so good i'm i'm sick i'm dizzy i think i'm gonna faint and she's taking like she's proper serious about it and bro i'm high as fuck so this is fucking hard for me to deal with but i'm like well shit like what's, what's going on and she's like i'm in this restaurant i walked to this restaurant and like i felt like i was gonna faint they gave me a coke and i'm just kind of sat here please can you come and get me so i um yeah, so straight away, I just stand up, I grab the bag and like pack a couple of things in there, but I just wanted to fucking move. I didn't want, didn't want to leave everything there just because you don't know. So I put like my um, speaker in there and the charger and everything. Just literally run. So like the picnics left there, all the snacks are left there. I'm thinking, bro, I'm, I'm literally thinking, bro, I'm going to come back and those motherfuckers have stolen my snacks, bro. I'm going to be very pissed off. <laughs> but I run past them and everything. I'm looking into the restaurant, go to the restaurant, wrong restaurant. She's not there. And then go to a different one and kind of like see her outside. And she's just kind of like stood against the wall. So I go up, give like a big hug uh, to be honest you know as soon as she um called me and i saw my phone i saw messages from her as well like i felt so protective of her which it's not you know such a serious thing it's just kind of like someone's been smoking and you just kind of get like a little bit sick from it you get like a little bit dizzy or anything but i just i had such a level of like like protection and i think this was being aware of like you know the masculine energy inside of me and like probably the the number one masculine value is protection is to protect those that you love and it was really really kicking in even though it wasn't like a serious thing that was happening 
so I see her run up to her, like hug her, and we go sit down, and she's feeling like really like you know weak and dizzy and everything. So she's just drinking some coke and everything, and we just kind of sat there. And um, she later on told me like through messages just like yesterday that, that was like so sweet that she, like she felt like she instantly felt better because I was just sat there and we didn't even have to say anything. I was just sat there like just with like her hand in my hand, like just kissing it loads and everything. Um, and she begins to feel like a little bit better. And so I stand up, I go to the bar and say like, we'll pay, I'll pay for those cokes. And the guy's like, oh no, 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 like it's, it's okay. You know, she was about to pay, which is really nice for them as well. It's very, very nice for them. And so we walk back towards the picnic and I'm fully thinking those motherfuckers have robbed us, bro. But we go back there, uh, all the snacks are there, everything's there. There's no like shit all over the picnic or anything. And the guys have left anyway. So we just uh, sit down. But as we walk towards the place that our picnic was, that's when we walk past the guys doing the gym rings. So that was just, it was just fun as fuck to see. And like some guys doing like slow muscle up. So I ask him if I can have a go and he lets me on. I do like a little muscle up like fucking shit form because i've barely been on the rings recently and i do like a poor like handstand and stuff but it's still nice hop off speak to him a little bit and then we just go sit down and then it's like nice again like she started to feel better we're just eating snacks and everything and we're just having a good time then um so we go back home and it's almost like the end of the day like we're just ordering food and we're just having like a good time she starts singing which was like so sweet like she wasn't even trying to like you know sing to me or anything she was just literally like up into the toilet or something and she just like played like some background music and she's just singing it's it's such a beautiful like vibe to like you know have it having a shower or having a shit or something and you just hear like the girl that you're with is just like singing in like a good mood outside you know what i mean and um so it's a really really good night with her and um yeah, she was saying, like, oh, you're, you're leaving tomorrow, like, I don't want you to leave and everything, and you're going to do the meet-up so she knows that she's going to go in the morning. And everything. I told her, like, I'm doing the meet-up, like, I don't really want you to be there just because, like, I want to focus on the boys. I don't want you to just be, like, stood there just fucking looking at me whilst I talk about, like, stuff. So um, so we wake up, it's time to go, check out the hotel, get her an Uber home, and uh, I walk over then to the... Oh, at this point, actually, yeah. So then it's at this point, so I wake up, uh, get her Uber home and I'm just kind of killing time in downstairs in the hotel like I've checked out and there's a bit of time between now and when my meetup is going to be just down the road with the you know I did like a YouTube meetup and so I'm checking my WhatsApp messages and I have messages from now the first girl the village girl and this is where it, like it, I really feel like like it wasn't in my mind at all but you know, when I see her messages in a voice note and she's like pretty much tearing up and she's saying like she's seen the other girl on my Instagram reels and like she's crying about it saying like she doesn't like the way that I'm treating her and it, it, I really really felt like I fucking failed her here it, this was where I, like I felt such a level of like um I think maybe disappointment in myself because of that like I took the responsibility to like be her first and then didn't really appreciate like how important that really was and didn't for her to kind of like feel important and special because of that and then you know so we go through that moment together and then the next day she sees like on instagram reels that i'm like with another girl having like cute dates and i think that's probably what hurt her the most like she asked me if like if i fucked the other girl and like it's kind of like an obvious question i'm surprised she asked to be honest but i think what hurt her the most honestly wasn't even that i had sex with another girl straight afterwards it was actually just like that i had such a cute day like a full like date of like you know activities and kind of like stuff that we talked about that we wanted to do like go through the canal and go sit down for a picnic and everything and i think that really hurt her which like rightly so and so i felt really really like guilty for that and like i called her in the morning apologizing and i usually don't ever do that you know as i apologized to her it was fully in my mind like wait is this red pill am i am i being an alpha male am i a beta male if i apologize you know like the red pill's fully like somewhat you know it's been very helpful for me but it's also plagued my mind with things like we never apologize to a girl and stuff and like I, I didn't know if, I, if that was the right thing to do. I still can't even tell, like, would it have been, like, a better, more, like, red pill or, you know, alpha male thing if I didn't apologise or do, who the fuck knows at this point, man. But, yeah, I, I, absolutely, like, I did. And I did, I just, I felt bad about it, man, because I thought, like, I, I felt so special because of her and I knew that she felt special because of me and then straight away it's just, it's tainted because now she's, like, seen, you know, like, me with another girl straight afterwards and because we somewhat had, like, those plans to meet on Friday but then it kind of became apparent that, like, we weren't going to meet because I was going to go do the, the meet-up and then go to, to my flight because I was leaving on Friday. And so that really upset her and plus it was this thing of, like, oh, fuck, like, now she's upset and I'm going to go see my boys and I'm going to leave Amsterdam and go back home. 
And of course, you know, I can always come back in the future and stuff. It's not that far away. It's an hour away and everything. But it's kind of like, you don't want to leave in that situation. Really, really didn't want to leave. And like the girl that you've just been with is like tearing up in front of you and she's really upset. And you're still in the country, but like your flight is in a couple of hours, like five hours, do you know what I mean? And it takes her like three hours to come here or, you know, if I went towards her. So it was a really awkward situation. It was really upsetting. And as I'm on the phone call, I can start walking towards... Vondel Park and I'm just kind of round the corner and we're just kind of like wrapping up the call before I go to meet the boys and I just hear like Adonis <laughs> and one of the guys walking past just sees me and so straight away I'm like I say to her like okay I've got to go see you later and I'm like this is when the meetup starts bro meetup was the fucking <laughs> no offense to the girls watching this but the meetup was the fucking highlight of the trip boys oh my god like fucking 30 I think about 30 guys showed up like I was literally expecting a couple of guys honestly I was expecting like a 10 would be like a good number like 30 guys showed up man so this was the first guy I spoke to him it's fucking awesome he was from um Rotterd Rotterdam he said it was about an hour away so we walk into the park and I just I already see like a big circle of guys like there's probably like 10 guys there so we walk in say hi to everyone I give everyone like a hug ask names I, I was asking everyone's name and I swear to god bro no offense to the guys but like I forgot everyone's name as soon as they told me I was fully trying to like you know Dale Carnegie and shit I remember like one person's name and it's only because his name was like Alex and everyone else had like a like like you know like a Dutch name I was like bro there's no way I'm remembering the, the there's no way I'm remembering this shit. But it was... <laughs> we get there, bro. I feel like a fucking, like, legend. I'm, like... It literally feels like I'm speaking to friends. And everyone's, like, so happy to see me. I'm so happy to see every single person there. Straight away, like, just saying hi to everyone. Like, a big circle starts forming. More and more people are running down. Like, I, I can't even get, like, a full conversation with the guy at this point. Because everyone's coming in. I'm speaking to every single person who comes in saying hi to them. And eventually, like, we've literally got, like, 30 people and, like, it's fucking, like, it's packed. Like, it just looks weird. It's, like, in this random, like, random circle. And I'm, like, right in the middle. Everyone's, like, asking me questions. And, like, this is when people, like, the first... They ask me questions and, um... We've got everyone set up, and so I go run up to a girl and like get her to take a picture. She takes like a fucking trash. You wouldn't have expected it. Cause she looked like a girl who would take fucking selfies, but she takes like trash pictures. So we wait, and then some other girl walks, some woman walks past, and like she's like an older woman, and everything. And so I wasn't expecting much, but she takes like the fucking fire pictures. I like, really got the light in and everything. Let's go, Granny. And she gave her a fist bump and everything. Got like nice pictures from her. And then we just stood in a circle. Everyone's just asking questions, and everyone's like connecting with each other and like just speaking about self improvement. And like they start like showing me stuff. So one guy brings out like an iPad and shows me like his wall tracker 180,000 is like the starting salary of the job that he wants from Google um, it, this is when the first guy brings out a book and the first book was the four hour work week so the first guy who I, who I spoke to uh, when he said Adonis when I was on the phone the one from Rotterdam I forgot his, his name though but I've forgotten everyone's name but he brings out the four hour work week in a hard back and he says can I sign it because it's the big book that helped me and I I took the book and I'm ready to sign it I'm like boys I show it to everyone I'm like boys like this is why I'm here I am here today in a different country just casually on like a spontaneous trip because of this book that's like that's such a mad moment to be given the book to sign that actually allowed you that that was the start of your business fucking beautiful experience man so i signed that book and then people start bringing out more books got atomic habits I, I don't have my own books obviously people are asking me to like sign their their books sign atomic habits for a guy who hasn't read it yet but he's gonna read it and then a bunch of guys start bringing out journals and like one guy um i remember his name it was um it, the nickname he said was perry but the i'm trying to think of the full name it was like perit Parit, something like that, and um, he's, he's stylish as fuck. He's like he's on the pictures of like a blue um, jacket, long hair, and everything. I really like this style, and he brings out like fucking five journals for me to sign for his. This was funny as fuck. Brings out like five journals for me to sign for his friends. He doesn't know how to spell his friends' names, so every time I'm like I'm asking him like because it's his Dutch name, so like, how do you spell that? And he's like he starts telling me, and I'm like I just see the uncertainty in his eyes. I'm like bro, Google it, bro. <laughs> I'm not like, I'm not misspelling your friend's name on this fucking journal, man. That's funny as fuck. But I'm saying like hi to everyone, I'm signing like more and more journals and everyone's asking for pictures. So this is where the, um, the Instagram reel, so the, the day in the life video for this day was fucking sick. Where it's literally like, it's such a, like, it's a good music that I've put onto it and it's like everyone's running up to me to like take pictures and I'm signing stuff. And then there's like a circle around me while you see me kind of like, you know, speaking with my hands, like giving some lessons. And I was just kind of like sat around there and I've got like, probably five hours or so before um, to 
Yeah, probably like four hours or something. So I spent like four hours with the boys, actually. I wasn't even expecting that, you know. I spent about four hours with them. Like, we just, um, we probably stood there for like half an hour, one hour, just kind of like talking, taking pictures. And then I tell the boys, like, oh, yeah, let's go to a cafe. I'll buy everyone food or something. And one of the guys says, like, oh, there's this, like, cafe that does, like, this really, really nice cake or something. We should go there. So we, he leads us. We, we all go to, like, this cafe. We go past the canals, take more pictures. Go to this, like, it's probably a small cafe, right? I was expecting it to... In my mind, I was just kind of thinking of like Starbucks or something, but I was like, we walk in, probably like a homely small cafe, and like everyone walks in behind me. You know, there's a few people eating food there, and all they, all of a sudden, there's like fucking 25 just hoodlums in like puffer jackets just walking in, just one by one by one. And I started to see like a little bit of like stress from like the people who work there and people who are eating, and they're like looking at me weird. I'm like, can I have 25 slices of cake, please? <laughs> And like I'm getting everyone's drinks orders and she's like it's just all over the place so she's like wait can everyone's like stand outside because it's a bit too much I'm like yeah no problem and then she gives me like a pen and piece of paper to like take down what everyone wants so we get 25 slices of red velvet cake and then like I get a drink for everyone loads of people want like it was nice collecting data as well and seeing like what everyone's preferred drink was and we had like six apple juices four orange juices four waters two black coffee two hot chocolates um one cappuccino, you know, like, oh, like I've just got it all written down, come back in, show it to her, and, like, they start making it, and, like, they're cutting up the cake, and, um, the cake's fucking delicious as well, but just more and more, like, you know, they're just bringing it out, giving it to everyone, just feeding the fucking squad, and, like, the girls behind me start, like, looking at me a little bit, so I speak to them, I'm like, oh, how's the cake, and they're like, oh my god, you know, so good, so what are you guys doing, did you just feel, finish school or something, I'm like, nah, like, I'm just on, like, a little meetup for YouTube, these are my boys, and they're like, oh my god, like, no way, like, I thought you guys just finished an exam or something, what's your YouTube, what's your Instagram and everything. And um, the, the the waitress from the cafe is like bringing out all the food and the drinks and everything and I pay for it, it's like 180 pounds. So it was like 200 and something uh, euro, something like that. Pay for it, so fucking, and she was literally like so happy as well. She was like, that's the biggest order we've ever gotten. And then there was like, so she gave out all the cakes and she gave me like these two bags. And she was like, oh, these are just extra, like everyone's got the cake now, but like, um, you know, a couple of people didn't want it and there was like less than 25 people. So we just had like literally stacks of extra cake. So we all go and, um, sit next to the canal in the nice sun and just eat cake together and we literally sit there for like an hour and a half or something just just literally eating and just drinking hot chocolate and just answering questions and everyone's just like speaking about stuff we speak about like um a lot of it a lot of the talk was about like business it was about family friends dating andrew tate it was like you know just so many good conversations man and you know it it truly truly did not feel like i was talking to fans i'm, I'm really gonna be compl i know it's like maybe a lot of celebrities say this but it literally just felt like i was speaking to my brothers it literally felt like i was just speaking to my friends like as if we'd all went to the gym and we're all just eating like <laughs> post-workout cake we were just chatting we we're just laughing we're all like bantering and just like yeah, it was just fun as fuck man it really was like the, it really was like the highlight of the trip and the same thing with the dubai meetup as well like it, it's such a beautiful experience meeting people who like like your work and they appreciate you and like because i'm a quite a friendly person it's like if someone likes me i pretty much like them back straight away like that's just the way i'm built and it's like i can always see the positives in people so it was like such a beautiful experience that like it's like it's a barrage of people who are like so friendly to me and i straight away i'm friendly to them i really like that and um I'm getting to know a bunch of the guys, they're telling me like some problems, asking for advice and everything. And we're just like, we're getting to deep discussions about like loads of stuff, like metaverse and everything. It was so interesting. And um, yeah, then, then it gets to about like 2 p.m. or something. My flight's in like three hours. So I get a taxi, we're just waiting for it. Then eventually stand up. And then there's, we've got like two bags of cake. So one of the guys was saying like, oh yeah, we could give it to like homeless people. There's always homeless people around like this, um, the train station that he goes to. So I literally just gave him like a big like stack of cake. And so like, yeah, just hand it out and everything, give it to like some homeless guy. So he later on actually, he did that as well. He sent me a picture of like, he gave the whole bag to like some homeless guy, which like, it's really nice in it to be able to spread that round. Then I took the bag as well, which had like four cakes, I think something like that. And I took that to the airport, hugged every single person before I left. And um, it was just fucking awesome. And like the Uber's there and I literally had like 20 guys to like say goodbye to. Everyone's like proper like excited in and everything and get into the car like wave goodbye everyone and the uber driver's asking me like you know what's what's happening and everything it's just so good man so on the way back to the airport now i'm in such a good mood no no you know what i wasn't as soon as i left the boys i'm, I'm gonna be completely honest i wasn't it was like i was such a, i was in a flow state with them and stuff as soon as i got in the car like i just i felt so saddened by what had happened with the first girl 
I've really felt like I kind of like disappointed and I did feel like there was a level of like good connection there and like I definitely do feel like empathy for her. And so straight away that was in my mind. So it was almost like a sad leaving experience, I think, because I was messaging her saying like, I really wish I could see you right now. Like it would be so fucking awesome if you could just like teleport here before I go. And um, yeah. But like I get to the airport and I'm fully thinking like, I mean, I'm gonna go check in and everything. I'm fully thinking like, who should I give these cakes to? So I'm thinking like, who should I, um, but I can't, you know what? I actually felt like a bit of like a fucking like weirdo, like being in the airport with like a couple of cakes that I was gonna give to people. I was almost visualizing that I would like go and give it to someone and they'll look at me as if it's drugged or something. But I'm like, I'm going through the airport and I'm just going through like some random scanner and like one of the girls, who, there's two girls who work there and I just saw them kind of looking at me. So I look back and I smile and she like walks up right, proper happy and she's like, what's in the bag? What did you get from the bakery? And I was like, oh, it's for you. And she's, like, oh, she's so happy. She's like, what and I, like, I got one for you too like to a friend behind her and like they're so happy like, oh my god thank you so much and everything what what is it and everything and it was so fucking nice man because because it was like do you know it was in my mind that that was like a pure act of like just kind of kindness that could have stayed around and be like oh so <laughs> what's your name like my name's Hamza I'm, I'm a youtuber I've got clout I've got money <laughs> like get me on Instagram <laughs> like I didn't do any of that I literally just gave it to him as a smile and said like I hope you have a great day or something just walked off and I could just see him like so happy about it like such a peaceful like genuine experience got like two cakes left I think um no maybe just one at this point did I give one to someone else so I gave two to them maybe I just had three of them so I've got I think I've just got one left in the, the bag and there's like a flower on it. And like one of the guys who came to the meetup just bring, brought me a fucking flower. Like he just had a flower in his jacket. I was like, that's not anyway. Yeah, it's for you. <laughs> and I was like, fuck? <laughs> so I just got like a bag with a little bakery thing and then a flower in it. Go up to the security and everything. There's like some old woman who's like working behind, you know, one of those things where like your bag's about to get scanned and so they've got like the trays and stuff. So I'm like putting my stuff on the tray and she like says for the bakery bag, like I put it, put it here. And I said, Oh no, that's for you. And she looks inside. She went, No, like that's for one of you. That's, she said, That's for one of your girlfriends. I was like, Damn right it is. <laughs> you know it, man. <laughs> It was funny. I was in. This is when I got back into a good mood, and I like started. Put, I put music on, went through the security, put music on, and I'm just kind of like chilling for like two hours or so. So I, I start editing the daily reel for that video, and it just makes me so fucking happy. You know, I'm. I'm there is such a way to use social media which is so so positive and i am cracking down on it i'm still 100 I, i'll remain accountable and say like i feel like i'm definitely still spending too much time on instagram it's still like about an hour a day i do feel like there's a level of productivity with that where it's like you're making the video and then you end like i sometimes end up watching reels and like you, you can like take people's audio like you know the songs and stuff that they use and so it's a level of like inspiration like if you want to be a youtuber you kind of do have to watch some youtube videos to begin and because i'm quite new maybe it's a maybe i'm just fucking coping i'm a jeffrey i probably am to be honest but yeah um and I'm just like making this video and this is when I, I felt so appreciative of Instagram and the, the reels that I've been making. I started scrolling down and just watching them and I was like, bro, like this is fucking sick. Like I've just had a great time with the boys and you know, it's it's going to be a nice memory. It's going to be like a flash and if I got a couple of pictures, nice. But because I'm going to make this reel, it's like, it's always going to be on my Instagram and like, bro, just yesterday, like I definitely do spend too much time. But you know what the truth is, right? I can... The only content I consume, I promise, the only content I consume on Instagram is my own. Like, I, I don't really watch. I don't scroll. I never fucking scroll. I never, like, look at ass or Instagram models or any bullshit. I sometimes go for, like, if I'm looking for, like, a song or something and, like, um it's hard to explain if you don't use instagram but there's like you can use audio in reels and like usually there's like audio but it's like someone talking kind of like a motivational thing which is like oh like discipline hard work and you know all this shit so sometimes you find one of them and it like it fits with the video that you're gonna make and you can like steal it from someone's um video onto yours so that's like sometimes takes some time but generally honestly like i scroll down my own page just re-watching my own uh, videos because it's such a beautiful thing that i could have just taken a couple of videos with the, a couple of pics with the boys but it's like I made like such a nice reel with like music on it and stuff. And maybe I'll, if I remember, I'll link it underneath this video so you can just see the day of like the, the meetup. Or maybe I'll link all three actually and you can just see like all three um, Amsterdam clips. Um, but I, I felt so grateful. I was in such a good mood now. I was like just drinking like some random like white bitch like iced caramel latte, latte or something in a, in a cafe. Just drinking that. Um, yeah, and it's time to go to the flight, hop on the flight and... Uh, like nice flight back home, come in, it's like proper cool back in the UK and everything. So there were a couple of thoughts I've actually wrote down right here. This isn't even for the script here, but this was like just where I a journal if I don't have like an actual paper journal. And um, 
Let's see. So one of the first things I wrote down is that I was aware of leadership, like who walks into a room, who opens the door and everything. And we've discussed that before. Another thing was that I realized that a full day with a girl is enough. After a full day with a girl, I think I lose like a level of presence. And what was interesting about this was that it can be like, for example, one day with one girl is good. The next day with another girl is also good. But then if there's like a second day with the girl, I did notice like, you know, the Dubai, the Dubai girl, the second day, I did notice a somewhat, not a huge level because I was still connected and stuff, but somewhat a, less of a level of like interest and excitement than I did on the previous day. So it was just something I know there, which I know it sounds kind of like insulting to the, to <laughs> the Dubai girl who's watching this and I'm sorry, but, um, it's just like I was aware of it, right? And it does kind of make sense. You do kind of, you know, the first time you see someone, it's proper exciting. But if you spent like 24 hours with them and you're spending another 24 hours, of course, the last 24 hours is probably going to be less exciting than the first because of the level of like excitement and reconnection and everything. But that was something that I just kind of noticed. And um, one of the, to be honest, yeah, one of the big things with this trip with the the village girl and also what happened before this trip. So I probably should have said this, um, was that I've been getting a lot of what the red pill calls comfort tests recently. So oh, my camera is fucking hell, bro. <laughs> I mean, it has been a one hour video, so I'll give it some respect, but the camera, the uh, battery is quite low now. Uh, I'll wrap this up quick. Right. So I've been getting a lot more comfort tests recently, which is a really good sign. So there's in the red pill, there's two things. There's a shit test and there's a comfort test, a, a shit test. It, women will shit test you no matter you know the type of man you are and stuff but generally it's kind of like it's not really a bad thing because it's an opportunity for growth but it does kind of show that the woman isn't to so totally certain that you are the man that you say you are so this is why sometimes like girls don't even know that they do this and they'll all disagree that they'll be so sure that they don't do this but they'll sometimes create like arguments and stress and stuff for, like no reason and they'll sometimes like just kind of call you out you know what i mean and and the way to like pass a shit test a shit test will be a girl saying like oh i bet you say that to all the girls or, you know all this bullshit and like the way to pass it is, is to kind of just like agree with it and just laugh about it and everything and, and not be like oh no i don't say it to all the girls i don't even get you know all this bullshit right but a comfort test is what you get when you become higher value. And it's kind of like now the stress in a woman's mind isn't so much that you're a low value guy who's kind of fake and being high value. It's actually that you're a high value guy who won't commit to her. So a comfort test, is, it, it doesn't even need to be seen as a, a test, really. It's just kind of a girl showing that she needs more comfort and commitment from you. And I've never so much experienced that before, which is when you really think about it. Yeah, it's kind of obvious. Like I've never really been the guy that girls have this level of like, stress that they really want me to commit to them and just recently it's happened more so i went on a really really nice date just before this amsterdam trip like a couple of days before and i connected really really well with this girl it was like a very very good like first date and we liked each other and uh in the morning after she's probably watching this video to be honest as well but like in, in the morning after she sent me a message saying like um, you know, she's unsure, like, can we have a call? And on the call, she says, like, you know, it's, on the date, I told her, like, the brutal truth, of, like, the honest stuff, like, yeah, I'm going to Amsterdam, I'm going to see girls and everything. Because during all this time recently, like, I've been so totally honest and unfiltered when I speak to a girl and they kind of ask me, like, what my plan is or, you know, what I'm looking for or something. I just tell them, like, I'm dating multiple women right now and, like, tomorrow or, you know, the next day or so I've got a date and stuff. I just tell them the truth because I've never been, like, on, I've always been somewhat of an honest guy over the last few years, but not so much with dating and with women because I've always known that it's not really what they want to hear and to be honest it's almost like an experiment i've been 100 honest and i'm probably going to make a video to say like it's not actually uh beneficial it, i'll have to deeply think about it is there value in being totally honest but also hurting i don't know but the idea is like i don't think you should be 100 honest with with women because the truth is so um this day I went on, so this is before I went to Amsterdam with this girl, it was a really nice day, we connected well, she liked me and everything, and then she just kind of got put off with this idea that, like, oh, I'm going to go see other girls, and she didn't want to be like one of the girls and be in competition, and pretty much the similar thing of the village girl as well, and when you think about it, it's like, these girls, they, if I wasn't honest with them, if I kind of hid, you know, the idea of like, oh yeah, I'm sleeping with other girls, or I'm just seeing other girls, they would have known anyway. I mean, they, they really would have like thought it because if a girl's interested in you, I'm like, really interested in you, especially when you've got like a level of like status and stuff and they know that you're getting other girls, right? And I'm not trying to seem big headed, but it is the truth. Even if I didn't tell them, the thing is, if I didn't tell them, 
it almost would have been like one of those things where like they didn't like they'll they'll disagree with this but this is the this is the the truth of like female nature really is that they they kind of wouldn't have kept it in mind as much it would have hurt them in, in probably the same level but it would have been one of those things where it's like as long as i don't openly say it to their face like yes i'm dating another woman tomorrow they don't really act on it as much so that's why I thought, you know what, like I, I've almost been like an experiment of like 100% honesty and I don't really think it's a good thing because all it really seems to do is just hurt them. And so I think, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think it would be better to be like, let's say 90% honest, 95% honest and to, to not make it so obvious, to not openly speak about the fact that you're dating multiple women, which of course... Like, I'm dating my fans, right? I, I pretty much only really date my fans right now. Like, I'm not on Tinder. I, I don't really do, like, much cold approach or any, anything really that much. If I can make eye contact with a girl in the gym, like, I'll go speak to her. But I'm not really... I don't really do any outbound stuff. All of, like, my dating route is, like, inbound. Like, if a girl messages me and she's, like... It's always the same fucking message. Every girl who messages me on Instagram thinks she's being original. She's like, hee hee, I just saw your Insta I just saw your video and it's like, it's so good. <laughs> and I, even though I'm a girl, but it still works for me. And by the way, you're, you're really cute as well. Like, they always send me the same message. It's kind of cute. <laughs> but I end up speaking to them and then um, it's the only way. Like, it's the only women I'm meeting because I'm not in such, like, a big... I'm not after, like, such a big amount of women, right? I'm not, like, so, like, oh, I want to try and get as much pussy. Like, I don't really give a shit right now, do you know what I mean? No offense to them, but it's, it's like, I want to date good quality women who, who literally follow my advice. That That's literally my type right now. I'm not even going to lie. I want to date good quality women who are attractive, who um, literally watch my videos. Like, I've never had better women than right now. I truly have not. Because when, if a woman's watching my videos, bro, I'm not the most perfect guy, but like she's following some good ass advice, bro. She's exercising, she's meditating, she's gratitude journaling, she's thinking about like feminine, um, feminine energy, masculine. That was always like a big thing with when you watch one of my videos on the Unfiltered channel, and so that's what the energy they bring as well. It's a beautiful experience like that. But um, with these comfort tests, it really, really made me aware that it is obvious and any man who's been in this, the red pill sphere will be like yeah this is like a learning lesson you should have had years ago but i wasn't at that level of like value to even get comfort tests that much of course there was a couple when you know i was like sleeping with girls in uni but not that much but the idea is like don't boast about it don't make it so open that you sleep with girls and of course like i don't really have the benefit of being able to do this because i will always speak unfiltered and so any girl who's somewhat interested in me but my sample size is literally just the girls who watch my videos and of course if you watch my videos i'll tell you the truth i'll tell you the authentic like unfiltered truth so it's kind of like i don't really get to benefit from that so i'm going to try and find a way which i'm 100 percent honest with the camera but it doesn't really hurt the girls who are somewhat interested in me right now so that's something interesting that I have to really be thinking about. And the... So the final point then that we'll cover quick... Oh, my camera's going to die. Final point I'm making real quick. Make her miss you. There is so much like beauty in those moments when you aren't around the girl all the time. There is actually so much value in having like some level of distance between you. You don't want to be the guy. It's kind of like a law of power as well. Like if you're seen as abundant, if you're seen as like, you know, you're there all the time, you're always ready to message, you're always there next to her. You kind of seem less valuable. What's scarce is valuable. And I think the dynamic that I'm in with the two girls that I just met in Amsterdam is very good. Actually, I've never considered like long term a long distance dating and I don't it isn't dating because I'm not like exclusive with them or anything but at the same time it's like the, I know there's a, there's like a huge level of attraction just because of the fact that we can't see each other all the time I'll end it there do the hard work especially when you don't feel like it Mwah.